Hi and welcome back into Blockbench. I am Kevin, a texture artist, Blockbench model designer and of course also an animator for the Minecraft Marketplace. And in this episode of Blockbench Modeling, which is still somewhat a series for beginner, we are going to work on a slightly more advanced model than just a regular Minecraft block. However, in comparison to last episode, we will use the block UV setting or the box UV setting when we are starting our project. So let's get going. First up, we develop a bedrock model. We start that up in our new project. Completely new project from the get-go. We're going to call this one Snowman. Snow? No man? Snowman. Because why not? We'll leave the box UV checked in. We'll leave the texture width. Doesn't really matter. Because we're not going to work too much on texture resolution at this point still. Let's confirm that. Okay, the file is begun. Now... I know for a fact that a snowman has more than one cube to it, so let's start by adding a cube. I'm gonna hold ALT, cause an interesting part about the ALT key on your keyboard is when you have the resize tool, for example, and hold ALT, it'll allow you to move back into the move tool. And if you hold the move tool and click on ALT, you'll get back into the resize tool. If you hold the rotate tool and hold ALT, it'll get you back into the move tool. Or sorry, move the pivot tool. And the same thing for the pivot tool, it gets you back into rotation tool. These are all interesting things to know. But when I work on a model, I usually have move selected and I hold alt, the alt key on my keyboard, in order to get the resize uh, setting for when I'm working. So I'm going to pull this out to somewhere where I think the base of this, uh, this snowman makes good sense. This snowman is going to be three cubes in size. So let's see, this one is 14 by 14. I can look over here to see that it's 14 by 14. Okay, let's get going. Now, there are two ways I can go about this. I can either now create a new cube by clicking add cube, or I can hold control and click B, which will duplicate this cube, or right click this cube with my mouse and click on duplicate. What this has done now is essentially create a second cube that is the very same size and proportions of the one cube we just had. So if I were now to click on the move tool and pull this up, you can see that I have a second cube now floating in there above the first one. Let's work with this one. I'm going to pull it down so that it faces and aligns just on the very face with the first cube. I'm going to go within my resize tool by holding alt from the move tool and then just ever so slightly size this cube in to a good space. Okay, so it's now 10, 10. So this one should be 10 as well. Don't want the snowman to be inappropriately sized. Okay, let's do that again. But in this case, I'm going to do the Control D key. Control D, pull up, and then potentially also shrink this cube once more. Like that. And like so. That's a cute little snowman, I guess. Now, if you have ever seen a snowman, you know that a snowman is not usually just this. For the sake of it, let's start with this and see what we can do. So I'm going to start and add a texture to it. We go to the create texture. We go to template. We call this one snow man, like before. Confirm. Good. Uh, dis disable the power of two size. I'm not sure how many times I had to say that, but every once in a while you get stutter. And now it is applied a different texture space to all our faces. I go into paint and now you can see that all of the different cubes, you have the bigger cube at the bottom, you have the lesser cube here and the smallest cube here, have their very own areas in this. I know now that I want the snowman to be white. So I'm going to select a very white color, not necessarily completely super white, and I am going to paint bucket on all of these spaces by clicking on one surface, holding down left key, and then just dragging my paint bucket around. Thus I can paint all of them. I'm going to rotate around by clicking outside the model, holding left to rotate and drag. Click on one surface and then just hold down and drag. And the same thing with clicking in the bottom. If you look on the texture to our left here, there are two squares that apparently hasn't received the white color. Can you guess which squares these are? Well, if I were to go back into edit, now it goes quicker this time. Pull up, pull up. You can see that the bottom of these two blocks has that square each. Well, because they won't be seen, they also don't receive any texture color. So a way to work around this, if we go back into paint, is to today, and this is going to be an interesting one, we're going to use the copy paste tool. 
This allows us to remove faces if you want them from a texture space. So I'm going to click the Copy Paste tool. Now in this window right here, we can, if we hold Control, scroll. Yeah, you heard me. You can scroll and zoom in and zoom out. Test that. Hold Control, scroll wheel, zoom in, zoom out. You'll zoom wherever your cursor is currently located. So if I locate my cursor here, I'll zoom in there. If I locate my cursor here, I'll zoom in there. If I locate my cursor up here, I'll zoom in there. Move out and zoom like that. So we're going to zoom in just that so, uh, we have this one right here and scrolling up and down while not holding control will of course allow you to move up and down like here. If you move up just above this here, you'll see there's a small blue bar. If I were to pull that one, I can move right to left. Now with the copy paste tool, I can click with my left mouse up in the very left corner, click like that, drag all the way down to the right corner and let go. Now, as you can see, we have a square selection. There's a scissor down here. This scissor allows us to cut out this very field, essentially removing it from the texture, but also essentially letting us paste it somewhere else if we wanted to. I'm not gonna paste this one though. I'm just gonna cut it so that it disappears, right? And now I'm gonna move over to the other one that we have down here. And you can do that by scrolling with control, zoom out and zoom in, move, and then left click and drag, left click and drag and scissor out. Now those faces won't be seen, and we can go back into edit like we did before, lift this one up now, and you can see that suddenly it's hollow underneath. It doesn't have that square that we had before. This is a way to optimize your texture so they don't hold necessarily informa like unnecessary information. Okay, so the snowman is here. What side is north again? Do you remember that? Well, we are in edit, right? Ah, there is the north. So this is where our face should be on the snowman. Okay, let's go into paint. Let's work with a slightly darker color because I know that snowmans are usually put with like some rocks on the front. Hmm, one like there maybe, maybe one like there, maybe one like there. Uh, some smaller ones up here because why not? And then he has like two eyes. And then a carrot. Hmm, this is interesting. Where would the carrot go? I don't really see a good space for the carrot. Should I just take an orange color and do that? Like so? I could. Doesn't look that bad. It's a good way to do a simplistic snowman. And what if I wanted to have arms? Well, I could paint them. Select the slightly darker orange, because that will get you down to brown. Then select the space like this. And drag. And then paint some fingers. And then paint like this. And then some finger like that. Okay. Well, it seems like the snowman has some fingers now on an arm that is painted onto the body. But it still looks like snow. Wait a second. We have to paint another arm. Now I'll teach you another interesting tool that you can work with when you're painting within Blockbench. Let's go Control Z or undo up here all the way back to where we don't have that arm again. Or if you're used to this area, know that this field will not apply anywhere else. You can also color pick, paint bucket, and then just paint over it and we'll get rid of it. So let's select another brown again. Now, this time, I'm going to go to the setting up here do, 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 called Mirror Painting. Mirror Painting allows me to paint on one side based off of the center of our editing surface, which is based on this coordinate right here. That's the very center of our working space. And have anything that is on this side that has a side here be painted at the same time. As long as this one is ticked in, ticking it out, ticking it in. So let's see what happens when I tick it in. I paint here. Wait a second. Can you see now that there appears a line here, but also a line over here? Let me do that again. Keep an eye over here. Let drag. Ah, oh, interesting. So this is the mirror painting tool. If I were now to rotate this snowman, ah, there's paint here as well. Interesting. So let's just continue pulling all the arm out, right? Like that, and another finger like that. Like so. Now, I'm hoping that you're enjoying this series as much as I do. But as much as I'm helping you out here as a beginner, I would also like you to help me out in return. If you can leave a like and a comment on this video telling me about what you would like to see next or know more about within Blockbench so that I can niche these videos to you, make them more accessible and more valuable for you as the viewer, 
the better it is for me as well. I'm happy to do that. And it would be so fun. If you have any other suggestions or requests, tell me either here on YouTube in the comment fields or on my Reddit page at Arts by Kev. And if you're a subscriber of this channel, I can't thank you enough. It makes me so happy to see that people are interested and want to learn more about the modeling and stuff that goes into Minecraft. Because Minecraft has been one of the very core games of my entire youth and upbringing. It's one of the things that I play the most, having run a network and stuff with friends. I really love this game. And I would like to see more people have fun and explore and express themselves within it as well. That is not just tied to the marketplace, that is also tied into just working and developing your own experience. Having fun with it, seeing what you can do. So I try to break the limits and push the potentials. In the next episode, we're going to hyper upgrade this snowman and make him really, really dope. I'll see you there.